NECA throws out a new release you might want to pick up in the future. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, Batman Beyond Batarang Replica. This full-size prop replica of the Batarang comes from the Batman Beyond animated series. The Batarang measures over 8 inches long and features spring-loaded wings which can extend with the push of a hidden button. For those curious, the specs on this future bat tech, I've got myself not so futuristic of a tape measure in my hand, we're going to measure things off. Now the Batarang already known is 8 inches from edge to edge, I did say that at the beginning of this video, but the length of it actually isn't as long as it is wide. Sounds like a bit of a riddle. Not really. I mean, it's not as long as it is wide. While I'm doing this, though, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA that did provide the sample of the Batarang that we can have a look at in this video. Just to confirm things, from edge to edge of the Batarang, at least extended out like this, because it does compact as well. You're looking at the Batarang, yes, being 8 inches wide. I'm going to spin that around. You're looking at the Batarang being about 20 centimeters long. Well, again, from here to here. But just to measure it from the end to end, the tip of the one end of the Batarang to the other tip, you're looking at the Batarang only being about 7 inches. So it loses a little less than an inch. And to spin that around, to show you at least again in centimeters, you're looking at the Batarang being 18 centimeters long. The Batman Beyond Batarang isn't in fact the first Batarang we've gotten from NECA. In fact, to slide this one over, contained inside of its display stand, we can bring in the 1989 Michael Keaton Batarang, which also uses the same type of vacuum-formed plastic stand. We're going to talk a little more about that in a second. Size-wise, though, Michael Keaton's Batarang is quite a lot smaller, though, than Terry McGinnis's. I'll do more comparisons of that in a second, but just to drag it over so you can see, like from the tip to the tip of Michael Keaton's Batarang goes, if far enough down, it goes only to about the same width. So it would only be about like eight inches or so from edge to edge, but it is certainly a lot smaller. And like I said, this one does fold up as well. Going to put that back into its display stand tray. And another replica we can also bring in as well is the Batman animated series grapple gun. Now, there was also, in fact, the Michael Keaton grapple gun as well. I just didn't simply bring it in because these were two from the animated series. And, I, of course, I did want to compare the two Batarangs. Uh, I still absolutely love this one. I have taken the time since reviewing this to remove the batteries. Just I'm always a big worrisome person believing that the batteries are eventually going to leak in these replicas. Eventually, they always go back in if my friends want to see how they work. But, I mean, scale-wise, this would be a one-to-one -one scale prop replica of, again, the Batman animated series grapple gun. And then again, this would be a one-to-one -one scale of Terry McGinnis's Batarang. Perfect for having on display and perfect for also cosplaying if you're one that likes to dress around as the Cape Crusader, whatever time frame he's from. Unlike the grapple guns, the Batarangs at least come included with a display stand. Although it's really less a display stand as it is a vacuum-formed tray. The Batarang sits inside of that the same way, really. Again, I'm just going to slide this one over and bring back in the Michael Keaton one. Both are made of the same vacuum-formed plastic. I did discuss this, actually, when we had a look at the 1989 Batarang. That, it, once again, it's just a vacuum-formed plastic. The plastic seems actually just a little bit thicker than food takeaway trays, if you're ever getting takeout. They have embossed, of course, or sunken in the Batman logo here. Not painted, unfortunately, though. And Terry McGinnis's would be exactly the same. Let's go ahead and remove this right now from its tray. I'm actually just going to put the Batarang to the side. It is, once again, the same material. So to flip this around, you can see it. Like, it's a very hollow, vacuum-formed plastic. They did actually put the Terry McGinnis Batman Beyond logo, though, at least onto the top. But once again, I think painting this would have at least just made this a little bit more jazzed up. I do appreciate at least the fact that in both the cases, they include... Not so much display stands. It's a more closer representation of a display stand for the 1989 Batarang. But with Terry McGinnis's, you're actually getting just more so a tray. Still wish that at some point what they could have also done too is included like a little... I think I even had mentioned this in the 1989 Batarang, but sort of a half circle has a little slot or indentation into the top where the Batarang could have easily, comfortably sat inside of that. And it, you could have had it free-floating. I've been trying to devise something I could make as an alternative, even just taking a little bit of, I don't know, like 
Play-Doh or, or something along those lines that I can actually harden and put a little slit in the top. I would probably have to find a little bit more polished of a presentation later on, but at least something that you could actually take the battery and have it upright like this. Something, again, I wish they could have included with it. Again, I like the idea that they would have included like at least some way of displaying it, because if not for that, the battering obviously is just going to sit on a shelf flat. At least this way it presents it, but I think it could have been presented so much better than what we actually get right here, to be all honest. Going ahead and taking out the Batarang, though, we're going to just move this one to the side. There is actually also a blue version of the Batarang, but one thing notably about the blue Batarang is that the edges are what are blue, and it also is going to light up. This one does not light up. It is made of a generally light plastic, being, of course, that it's going to be have to have two halves sandwiched together, and then the mechanism is just off to the side fairly concealed. I mean, you can easily see still the outline of the oval there, but that's going to be the thing that extends out the blades, which we'll do more in a second. The blades themselves feel more of the halt, more solid plastic than the hollow plastic that's in the middle, but it still makes for a generally light battering. It's very easy to hold. It doesn't have any weight whatsoever. And again, just to hold between the two, I think because they've also added the magnets and the actual hinges, uh, the Michael Keaton Batarang actually ends up feeling a little bit heavier than what we get with Terry McGinnis because the two functionalities. This one, remember, had the folding mechanism where you can actually fold these in and have them stored on the side of the of the utility belt. And then you would just be able to extend it out, extend it out like that. Although, if you remember, if we watched the review of it. Uh, this one also had the problems with the hinges. So you always had to have the hinges upright in order for the Batarang to be rigid. The moment you had it the opposite way, that's when you'd actually have more of a floppier battering. But like I said, Terry McGinnis isn't, doesn't have that functionality with its battering. It's actually more of a folding in mechanism. Before we do that, actually, I just want to show you guys the detail done to this. It's pretty nice. It looks like they probably would have all molded this all in the same plastic and then simply just painted it. At least one thing that's good about it is the edge of the red is actually elevated from the black. So if you can actually run your finger along the groove here and feel that it's a lifted bit of molding. Even though it's all just still painted, at least it feels like there's something going on here that's not just a smooth material or smooth mold that they ended up using. It's finished on both the sides and it obviously looks the same as it does on the front than it does on the back. To fold this up, all you're going to do is take the sides and just literally compact it. And when you compact it, first of all, you'll hear the springs inside, but there's also going to be a stopping point. And you heard it right there on the one side. It's a little harder to do on both the sides. But when I fold it in, you'll hear a click like that in the process. I may have actually hit the button, but we'll do this again on the other side. Fold it all the way in. There we go. It actually might be even be better to fold them in at the same time so that one doesn't pop the other one out. That's actually one thing I've noticed when actually playing around with this, that pull, folding in the one seems to then ultimately pop the other one out. So it might actually even be in your better interest to fold them in at the same time. But once snapped, this is a more compact version of the battering. And simply just to extend and retract out those blades, you're just going to press the button onto the side, right? Right there. Pressing it extends out the blades. Simple enough. I mean, it doesn't have to be overly complicated for the gimmick that it is. And once again, just to fold it back in. Obviously, look right away and hear right away for that, that locking mechanism to, to lock everything in place. And like I said, the battering's going to hold pretty good together. My only thing, again, is, again, to bring in back the display stand. It's the only thing I think that NECA needs to improve upon when it comes to these replicas. The grapple guns didn't have that issue because the grapple guns were just displayed on their own. But I think in definitely a case of the Batarang like this, if they had just included like a little half circle, that's all they literally needed to do, a half circle of plastic with a little slot in the top, something almost that would hold like a menu card in a restaurant. That's probably what along the lines of what I'm thinking of. Something like that could easily then have the Batarang upright. And you could do, in fact, the same thing even with Michael Keaton's. It could have also even just slotted into the top. You could have had them displayed like this, or you could have them dis displayed like that. I think it's really just the vacuum form tray. It almost sort of devalues a bit, a, li a little bit of the way that they're pre presenting these replicas. The replica itself is fantastic. I just like the look of it. It's sleek. It's compact. And again, when you're ready to use it, you're just going to press the button again. I mean, of course, making sure your fingers aren't in the way. And it, like I said, it extends out. Uh, and it, it's easy. And and if unfortunately down the road, if something does go wrong with it and the spring breaks inside, it's going to be a little bit harder to kind of disassemble everything. But for the time being, it certainly makes for a really nice looking battering. Again, the only thing I think is the issue with it, even isn't so much the issue, is the fact that it's being presented inside of a vacuum form tray. 
I really hope that at some point that down the road, if they plan to release any other future replicas along sort of the same vein as what we're getting here, that to have another option available, even just again, like literally just that shape right there on the side of the battering where you can kind of get your fingers in there and pull the battering out. If it was just that size, slot on the top, you could easily just attach the battering into that. Other than the way they're actually presenting the Batarang, it's a really nice replica. Especially if you're a big fan of Batman Beyond and all of the weapons, the tech that Terry has at his disposal in the future. It's a really great replica to be putting on display thanks to the folks over at NECA Toys. Unless you're dressing like a wizard, it's very unlikely you can be able to slide out stylishly a battering from your sleeve the same way that Terry McGinnis has done in the animated series. While not being able to succeed at that, at least you can press a button that's concealed in the middle section of the battering that pops the wings out on both the sides. Still, we'll recommend the idea of actually folding the wings in at the same time. I don't know why I tried to do it in the review, because all the times I've done it outside with the camera off, I've folded the wings both in at the same time. But if you try to pop one in, it seems to a lot of times pop the other one back out. So yeah, you definitely do want to fold them both in at the exact same time. Now, NECA did actually make two variations of this battering. It seems to be the same size, same specs, but a different gimmick. The more traditional black and red one that we looked at in this review, my favorite, I think, of the two, has the folding out wings. The blue variation of that swaps the red out for the blue, and instead of having a feature of having the wings popping out, I think it swaps it out instead for a strip of LED lights that are inside the edges of the wings, so it actually does light up. I think still between the two, I prefer the more traditional look of the battering. This is the one he always has in the series anyways, the more black with the red on the edge. That's the one I'm going to go with, but I'm sure at some point I'm going to probably venture off into the not-so-distant future and pick up the, the glow-in-the-dark or the light-up version of that Batarang as well. And if I do, we, of course, we'll be looking at that and comparing that in an upcoming video. Now, of course, I did talk about the fact that this one does have the vacuum form tray. It seems even more of a tray than it does a display stand. By the nature of this type of battering, it has to be kind of more propped up on an angle. So that, that would explain why the tray has to be built the way that it does. And I get the idea that NECA does want to keep the cost down. To be able to produce a replica that has a spring out feature and to keep the price at around that $35 price point, they didn't probably want to go too elaborate when it came to a display stand. But simple like a just a table table side menu card stand. A little half circle with a slot in the top. How many times, how many times are we going to keep talking about that half circle with the slot in the top? But that's really all it would have needed to be. Include that with these maybe for future releases that you simply just attach that I don't know how stable it would be. I mean, granted, it's so easy for me to throw out suggestions like that. Maybe it wouldn't be stable. Maybe it would fall forward. Maybe it would have to be a bigger display stand. Maybe it would have to involve more tooling. Maybe it would involve also involved making a more expensive replica. Still, for what it is, not including the tray or display stand that these, these replicas have come included with, I'm really, really happy with how this battering turned out. It looks like it does in the series. And yeah, I'm probably going to, at some point, get that light-up version of the battering, even though it's blue instead of red. I still like the look and the shape of it. I think NECA has done a really good job on this. What do you guys think of the Batarang from Batman Beyond? Let me know down below in the comment section. Weigh in your thoughts of what you guys think. And again, a big thank you to the folks over at NECA that did provide the sample of the Batman Beyond Batarang replica. If you enjoyed this video, uh, hit it with a like. If you love the content that you guys are seeing and certainly want to stick around for more, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. Keep your peepers peeled because while we have wrapped up the review for a Batarang replica, there's definitely going to be more NECA reviews coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.